For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. On October 3rd of 1993, Randy Shugart looked at Gary Gordon, and as they were flying in their Black Hawk chopper, they saw that their friend Mike Durant had been shot down. And they radioed in to their commanding officer and said, may we please go down onto the streets of Mogadishu to rescue Chief Warrant Officer Mike Durant. Their commanding officer got back on the horn on the radio and said, it's too dangerous, you'll be of better assistance to remain in your chopper and to provide assistance from the air. Once again, Randy Shugart and Gary Gordon called back to their CEO and said, sir, put us on the ground. We request permission to rescue Mike Durant. At this point, the commanding officer said, I need to hear you say this. I want you to request permission. I want you to know how dangerous this mission is. So at this point, Randy Shugart said, please put us down. The Black Hawk landed about 100 meters away from the position, and Randy Shugart, with his M14 and carbine pistol, made his way with Gary Gordon to Mike Durant. Mike Durant's body had been pinned between the console and the flight stick. They extricated him from there and fought, and were able to apply first aid and save Mike Durant. Both Gary Gordon and Randy Shugart lost their lives in doing this. So you may ask yourself, what in the world does that have to do with Trinity Sunday? But here's the thing. You think of Trinity and you think, okay, shamrocks, right? Shamrocks with three leaves. And you think, okay, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But uh, look, I'm, St. Patrick was trying to illustrate something, but it didn't really work that well because the point is that each leaf is not the whole clover. It's just a part of it, right? The shamrock, it, it's... the when you look at that, it's only the Father's part of the shamrock, only the Son is part of the shamrock, and only the Spirit is part of the shamrock, and they're not all God. So that's where that kind of illustration falls apart. Or you may get another one, like, and I remember this one going to, going to Sunday school, right? It was the whole thing of the illustration of water, right? And I know my Sunday school teacher was well-meaning. He said, look, think about water, right? Water at room temperature exists as a liquid, right? And if you boil it, it's a gas. And when you freeze it, it's a solid. Well, the problem with that illustration is that at any given moment, the water with H2O can not be a solid and a gas and a liquid at the same time. And that's kind of the, the problem that you get with like some early church folks were like, oh, well, maybe God's just like that water, you know, vapor and solid. And so you got God the Father in the Old Testament, God the Son for 33 years while he's on the planet Earth, and then you get God the Spirit after in the book of Acts. But here's the thing. Did you just read Romans 8? It says that it's by the Spirit, because of Jesus, that we cry out, Abba, Father. It talks about the inseparable action of the Trinity. That the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are always working together. They're always working, and they, they don't work in different modes, but they're all in Trinity unity. One of the best ways to understand it, so forget about the water, forget about the shamrock. Let me give you one from a guy who's cleverer than I was. And he was, you know, sometimes we, we look at it like, oh, we're in the 21st century, we're so clever. Let me give you words from someone from the 4th century who nailed it. I mean, he nailed it because he was looking at the story of Jesus' baptism. And what happened in the story of Jesus' baptism, right? The sun goes into the water. It says that the clouds are split, and you hear a voice from heaven saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And then it says that a dove alighted upon Jesus. The spirit alighted upon him in the form of a dove. And so what St. Augustine tells us in the 4th century is that you have the lover, the father. You have the beloved, the son. And you have the very bond of unity of the Trinity, love itself. Why do you think 1 John says that God is love? Not God is loving but God in res, in himself, is love. I mean, think about it. If God were just unity, like if we were strict monotheists, that that's all he is, 
It means that when we say that we believe that in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, it means that before creation, you know, he's cosmically lonely. There's this question that, that they asked Augustine in the 4th century, and they said, what was God doing before creation? And do you know what Augustine said? Inventing long switches for boys who ask silly questions. <laughs> no, I'd say that jokingly, like, what, what I mean is that before creation, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are in perfect love. And we are created from love, we are rescued by love, in order to love. Those are the three points for today. You were created from love. You were rescued by love in order to love. That's the whole point of the Christian story from beginning to end. And when you get a glimpse into the Trinity, when you get a glimpse into that, it is mind-blowing. It's exactly what happened there in Isaiah chapter 6, where Isaiah is, is standing there. He's, he's received this prophetic call to go and bring the love of God to the people of Israel. And he, he gets a picture of cherubim and seraphim, and he, and he says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth is full of his glory. In fact, we're going to say those words during communion, believe that or not. But here's the thing. You were made from love. You were made out of the overflow of God's love. God didn't make you in order to get anything out of you. He doesn't need your worship. He doesn't need your love. He wants it. Doesn't that change the whole way in which you relate to God? The doctrine of the Trinity isn't just some throwaway. The reason why we dedicate a whole Sunday, one out of 52 Sundays of the year, to the Trinity is the idea that you are loved. That's what you need to get out of the doctrine of the Trinity, not shamrock and not water, gas, and solid ice. Thing. No, 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 no. Lover. Beloved, love. You were made from love. But the second thing is that you were rescued by love. But you see, God is this perfect community, and he calls us into that. The early Eastern church used to call this idea of what the, 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 what the Trinity is doing is perichoresis, the, uh, this idea of this amazing divine dance that's happening before the beginning of time. And God calls us into that. He calls us into that, if you'll pardon the irreverence, into this divine dance. For us to experience that same love. And what did we do? We turned away from that love. We turned away from his overtures. We wounded that love and we marred his image in us. And so what did God do? Did he leave us to our own devices? No. In love, he sent prophets. He sent priests. He sent people to communicate his message. Maybe they'll listen to my love message. And then when finally that didn't work, he said, I'm going to write myself into the very fabric and history of the universe. And so he sends his only beloved son to rescue us. We are rescued by love. Now, I remember in 1993 when I saw the images of Randy Shugart's body being dragged through Mogadishu. And, you know, those were powerful images, but you know what I found really powerful? It was looking at at National Geographic and seeing the be all you can be and the, you know, the red, white, and blue. And here's the thing. It's Memorial Day, right? People will join the army for a variety of reasons. You'll join the military for a variety of reasons. You might do it for mom, dad, apple pie, the red, white, and blue. But the only reason that you're going to stand side by side someone else, like Randy Shugart did with Mike Durant, is because you love them. You won't stay aloof in your Blackhawk a hundred or a couple hundred feet above the fray, you'll go into the fray. It's love. And so you hear the prophet Isaiah saying, here am I, send me. But here's this thing. In the Old Testament, there's this, there's this word that we get, and it's the Trinity speaking to each other and say, what should we do? I tell you that I will establish a covenant of peace and I will rescue you. Before time began, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit established a covenant of peace where the Son said, I will take on human form. I will do everything that humanity does as a perfect human being without using any of my godlike qualities in the power of the Spirit in order to return people to that right relationship with us. So you were not just 
made from love, but you were rescued by love. I was rescued by love. But all that is done to bring us to love, to bring love to others, to invite others into that same relationship. Because here's the thing. Once you've experienced love, you can't keep it to yourself. You have to share that. You want to tell others about that. And that's exactly what happens to the prophet Isaiah. It, it says that you know he sees holy, holy, holy. And he says, I'm undone. And then the angel flies with the coal from the altar, from the sacrifice, and touches his lips and says, your lips are cleansed. Now go and proclaim this good news to everyone. He says, okay, I'll go do that. And then, you know what? You know what's amazing if you keep reading the context of the story? Isaiah says, okay, I'm going to go and tell the people of Israel. He says, by the way, God says, you're going to go to Israel and no one's going to listen to you. But do it anyway. Because you see, that's what love is. It, love isn't the idea of going and doing something so that you get something in return. That's completely selfish. Love is selfless. That's 1 Corinthians 13, right? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Take 1 Corinthians 13 and throw your name in there, right? Peter is kind. Peter is patient. Peter, keep, Peter keeps no record of wrongs, right? The moment you keep doing that, you realize how short you fall from it, right? But then when you take that word out and you put Jesus is kind. Jesus is patient. Jesus keeps no record of wrongs. And because we read it that way, that's what gives us the ability to go love people that will never love us in return. That gives us the ability to turn the cheek when we don't have the capacity for that. So this Trinity Sunday, we are going to celebrate the memorial of our redemption. We're going to celebrate that love that reconciles us to God and to our neighbor. So Father, we thank you that because of your son Jesus' death, you have welcomed us in to relationship and fellowship with you. We ask that you would gather us in your son's name, that you would grow us in your love and send us out in the power of your spirit. Amen. Let's stand and affirm our common faith.